Welcome to this episode of the Customer Centric Retailing Podcast, a forum for retail leaders to discuss industry trends, challenges, and opportunities. This is Anil. And this is Fabi. And each episode, we invite some of the brightest minds in the industry to discuss the future of customer centricity, with topics ranging from the rise of e commerce to brick and mortar operations to omni channel technology to retail culture and how all of these elements come together to create customer centric retailing. Today, we have with us Sylvain Negra, founder and co CEO of Retail Performance 360 and former retail director for top luxury brands, including Prada, Ralph Lauren, and Michael Kors. Sylvain brings decades of experience at some of the most successful brands in the world to talk about what it takes from a technology perspective to create the best customer experience possible. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, it's it's great to have you, and and actually, Sylvain is a is a very special guest. Um, we're going to have a series of episodes that we do together, since there's so many topics that we want to talk to him about. Uh, it's hard to know where to even start. Uh, but you've had such an incredible career in retail, having worked with some of the most well-known luxury retailers in the world, uh, and a lot of experience dealing with brick and mortar uh, for specialty retailers like clothing brands, uh, which is, of course, a big passion of ours on this podcast. Um, so in this episode in particular, we really want to focus on in-store technology and what it takes from a technology perspective to really be able to create a memorable shopping experience in store. Um, so I'm curious, just to get us started, what your opinion is on the new and emerging retail technologies that are being developed today uh, by young and agile brands, and what are some of the main technologies that you're seeing retailers adopt uh, as part of the modern store? Uh, which technologies do you think are must-haves today? Perfect. Yeah, thank you for the intro. I think, um, uh, as we all know, uh, the digital is is not just recent is just not new is it an ongoing world for for retail um and i think technology has anyway uh, is is part of our, our everyday life but uh, even more for retailers uh, at the moment so as you as you mentioned i worked for 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 michael cole for sephora so for big names worldwide and uh, we, we implemented through the years a lot of technology and i think best in class retailers uh, are the need to use that technology at the moment because the consumer is one and 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 no matter the age and the, the social the society the social where you're coming from or where you're living uh, you, you need that technology you buy online and tomorrow you buy in store or you buy you buy to the in the department store so anyway uh, and any retailer has to go through that pass um, in-store technology is absolutely a must-have because store teams now are facing customers browsing with their iPhone. Uh, we've, we've experienced that uh, every time um, to, to look at the items, the colors that e-com can offer in the same brand. So it's absolutely a must-have for the brands. Uh, and, and some of the great examples uh, in-store, in of course, it's the, the iPad solution connecting connected from the brand with the warehouse the distribution center from Europe or from uh, uh, US whatever uh, that allows the team uh, to never miss a sell uh, which is absolutely what we want is we want to be uh, absolutely to say yes to a customer anytime and in the same time and before the crisis for sure uh, click and collect solution is absolutely a must have now because the click and collect is is is, is part of our life, uh, so the teams need to have this inside out uh, technology to be able to respond to a customer, and I think this is absolutely um, the way you know for for retailers. Yeah, absolutely, and I think you know in, in your experience in particular, you've worked with a lot of brands that are obviously at the top of their game, and they know the importance of. Uh, staying up to date with customer expectations. I think the problem with the retail industry for a lot of brands out there is that they're kind of scared to take a technological step and, and make a change. Um, one of Anil's favorite phrases I know is that nobody ever got fired for buying IBM. Uh, so people, you know, in the retail industry, uh, the trend really is to follow the status quo. Uh, which yeah. really doesn't work since customers are, are changing all the time and they expect things to change all the time within the retailers mm -hmm. themselves. 
So do you have any advice for retailers as they're trying to take that that first step to adopting new technology? Where should they start? Yeah. I, I think what what's getting on your nerve and, and we uh, when we, we, we work in retail is always to put yourself in the shoes of the customer. And we are all customer or consumer, uh, which is a step before being a customer to me. Uh, as a consumer, of course, you hate, hate, absolutely, when you go into a retail chain and you see that there is a lot of dis bad disruption, not the good side of disruption, uh, but the, 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 the bad side, uh, which is devices are not working. Uh, we have the solution, the iPad in store, but the solution is not connected with, the, with the, the POS. The POS, we have to wait the day after uh, to to be connected and to and 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 to know what we sold today in the store to 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 get the items back to the store but also to respond to a customer who wanted to know and to have the items the day after in the same store so i think seamless we've talked uh, a lot in the retail environment before before we were talking about digital we were talking about seamless service seamless service where you know the old steps of the selling ceremony the warm welcome and then discovering the need of the customer so the old retail which is still very important, uh, but but for, but for sure, uh, seamless now is you have to have that connection between the solution, the inventory, especially the inventory where the inventory sits, because you need to the customer wants it to have wants to have it fast. And if we're talking about brick and mortar, I don't want to give a reason for the customer not to come ever in the store. Otherwise, I will have to close all my stores and. I'm not sure I'm going to recover 100% of the, the total revenues just having an e-com. So stores are still very important, physical stores. That's why you need a seamless journey for the customer. Where No matter if I buy from the e-com of the, of the brand or the department store or the e-com of the department store, but it's still my brand that I'm selling to the customer. And the customer hate, honestly, hate when... There is something is wrong in the process, and 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 I think as a customer, I'm not willing to understand why. That's a, that's another reason with technology. Technology is going fast, even faster than than we are for sure. So so the brands need to to be up to speed to that. Otherwise, I think you fail, and then you don't go to your maximum sell. Yeah, see, uh, Sylvain, you, you really uh, you know, said some really nice points and actually they are like so close to my heart. In fact, those things really move me. You know, I'm, I'm feeling like, you know, uh, really, uh, what is it called? <laughs> Let me get the word. But then, yeah, no, I'm really getting excited for it. Actually, you know, when the retailers have, uh, they, they get on to the mission to uh, implement this seamless journey, so they actually face a lot of uh, you know, obstacles that I would say. Uh, in fact, when we are working with the retailers, some of the very important one is when they go integrating all these inventory in different systems, like just integrating uh, your inventory from your point of sale, because you know almost all the retailers today have legacy point of sale systems that were designed like 25 or 30 years ago. Yeah. And we all understand you cannot, you just cannot simply change those systems overnight. It will be a very phased approach. You have to take a phased approach. And the first step is to integrate. And integration itself with those point of sale systems is complicated. It mm -hmm. is complicated. And uh, if you don't do it right, then you know the risk is you have a greater risk of, uh, you know, when you offer buy online pickup in store to the customer, but when they come in the store and you are not able to deliver, that is even more higher risk of disappointing a customer. Yeah. It's more loss as compared to if you had never offered Bopis in first place, yeah. right? So, so like, you know, having an capability of integrating with your point of sale system, then keep integrating with your warehouse and all those things is important. And we see that most retailers face challenge in mm. these integrations. And that's why like, you know, uh, in my last uh, many years of effort that we have put in our developing our technology, we've been really working on how, how we can make it easier and reduce the total time it takes for integration.
Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, uh, this have, at the end of the day, the goal is with this technology is to provide a seamless buying journey and you use a really good word the ceremony of buying item right uh, yeah. your buying cycle it has to be seamless and has to be fun yeah. uh, because like you know at the end uh, sh the the shopping is also about having enjoying it. It, it it's something that you really love to do there is no returning point i think for in the customer mind uh because before i'm talking before but it's not ages it's like probably 10 years ago let's say 10 years ago, which is not so far, but still, it's, it, it's far away. Um, you, would exp you would be more patient if the store doesn't have the inventory. Look, I can, I can order it for you, madame, and then it's going to be available, thank God, in one week time. Today? No. It's a no-go. If I'm not able to respond, if I'm not able to connect the dots uh, between my different channels, I'm, I'm, I'm lost, I'm gone. And I, as a customer, I don't have that passion to stay and to say, I have a, the prime example I've been to recently, you know, to, to sports retailer, uh, very, very famous one, a large one. And, um, and, and, every, and, and in weeks time, three, four weeks in a row uh, for basic pants, running pan, you know, a black one that is the season one, there's no inventory. There is uh, three small and then uh, 10 extra large, okay? I'm not patient and I if I go to the store I'm not patient to say because they offered me of course to use the iPad to use the warehouse to use where the the inventory sits in another store but I don't care I just want my product there because this is the reason why I came to the store today otherwise I don't want to drive or spend money to go to the store so I think it both it's it is both ways so from digital to physical or physical to digital it has to be seamless because the customer don't care, doesn't care. He wants to have it now. And if we promise that I buy online, I see the inventory, I will get it. So this is working. But if I go to click and collect and then it's not installed because inventory were wrong and plus the POS are not are updated at midnight every day, then it becomes very difficult. Yeah, I know. I, I can totally understand what you said because like two days ago, I really needed, uh, you know, some pair of shoes and uh, I went and ordered a pair of shoes for click and collect. The store is nearby, like, you know, like a half a mile from where I'm here right now. Um, I wanted to get that pair of shoes. So I thought, well, let me uh, place the order. Uh, and in fact, their website had a capability to do buy online pickup in store. Okay. I placed the order. But, you know, to a little bit of unfortunate you know, a disappointment, though, that you have to wait for 24 hours. Uh, they, they were like, you know, we, we will fully, the order would be ready in 24 hours. And I was, uh, when I started the journey, my mind was that I will look, find the item on my phone, place the order, and probably it will take me like 15 minutes or 10 minutes from here to the store and I'll, I'll have my package ready to pick up. Uh, so that's where like, you know, the whole buy online pickup in store, you have to be able to do with confidence that you don't disappoint. And the second level up would be that you should be able to do it in a shorter time span. Means like two hours is a little too long yeah. because it's possible that I'm already in the mall. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to check if the you have the item I want to order. Maybe I already was on the sitting in the cafe in the mall and placed the order and hoping that once I place the order, after I'm done with my coffee or my breakfast or lunch, whatever, I'll go in the store and pick up the package and be driving yeah. home. And at that point, it's disappointing uh, if you cannot do that delivery in like few hours. That's where as a consumer we are. And, uh, and I think that we want retailer or the technology providers have to deliver on yeah. this customer expectation. Otherwise, I don't think we have any business to do in this world if we cannot yeah. deliver on this promise, actually, or a expectation, I should say. Yeah, de definitely, definitely. I think, um, uh, I think really consumer is leading the way today, uh, more than ever. And uh, when, when I said we are not, we're not passionate now anymore, because of technology, because of what the technology offers and because what the best in-class retailers are offering today, which is possible, um, I think it's not a nice to have now. 
it is some it's a must have if you have that solution that is integrating the different systems and inventory wise uh this is crucial this is really crucial also because um as a, as a consumer again i have so many possibilities to buy in in another place and 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 we've sometimes as a brand we just think on our we, we talk about competitors we talk about what's going on outside of course because it's there but sometimes and how many times you do a meeting without talking about the consumer or the customer which means that we need to be focused we need to be customer centric to it starts and ends with the customer and every step every the, the it and solution with inventory the the buy buy online and and pick up in stores is, is so crucial because now there is no choice you need to have it and uh, and i think it's so hard also from a marketing point of view uh, to engage people with a brand uh, when they decided I made the choice to buy your brand I need I need to have efficient ways to sell it no matter the channel but this is so hard to have that engagement to the brand the commitment to the brand loyalty is something very hard uh, to 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 have in in a brand so uh, when once you have you have that you you don't want to lose it and you want, of course, to open up for new customers and then new customers. Also, you can engage new customer with facilitating the, the buy the shopping experience. Definitely. And also, I think from a store staff perspective, there's it's really difficult when you face customers and your systems are not up to date or doesn't they don't allow you to 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 give an answer or a correct answer or you thought that was the right inventory, but it's not then you face difficulty to also uh, give a good image a seamless service back to the seamless service uh, that that's 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 hard and you, we we also i think we are breaking uh, the magic around the brand the magic about the experience i want in my product i'm excited about that because some i don't i don't know the percentage but in retail how many brands are selling things we don't need how many times we buy something i don't need we do that all the time right right so you can't give a reason not to buy it to break that that process in my mind uh and there's something's wrong okay loss of momentum okay it's gone I, I i'm not gonna buy it yeah absolutely and actually on the on the topic of customer disappointments i know you've you've taken more of a consulting role now and i think you're able to apply the experiences yeah. that you've had work working for these amazing retailers to help retailers now when they really need the help and obviously the retail industry as a whole is struggling it's not necessarily just one sector like luxury or you know it, it, it's pretty much everyone maybe with the exception of grocery um, so I'm curious if there's any particular challenges that you're seeing either recently um, that is kind of kind of a common trend across multiple retailers um, and you're just seeing it come come up over and over again. Um, I think um, I think I think brick and mortar is really the window. We're talking about brick and mortar becoming showroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if I have a, a 500 um, network, 500 stores network, I cannot have 500 showrooms, honestly. Right. I think, yeah, this is the way. Uh, look what's happening after lockdowns across the world, just right after lockdown, and then people can go back to stores. They're queuing to go to stores, but they could buy online. They don't need to go to the store most of the time, but they want to. Exactly, yeah. So I think there is a definitely, and I'm, I'm not talking in 20 years time, just let's say in, in five or 10 years time, okay? In terms of time frame, because it's going too fast. Um, <laughs> I think it's gonna be collaborating digital and physical, but if you want to have your digital working and delivering results and growing, you need your physical stores delivering a message, such as product, of course, uh, but also, feeling the brand and this is the reason also why we're going to the stores uh, is to, to 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 touch the product to to get interaction because we need that interaction and uh, the actual situation shows us every day that the human in, in the retail sphere needs that so and it's going to continue so i think um 
the environment, the experience, it's, it's still very important, but we, I'm seeing so much uh, retailers going down also. The windows is basic, so it's not engaging, it's not giving you the flavor of the season or uh, giving you, uh, the, oh, I want to go in the, into the store because I, I, I have great windows, you know? So yeah. we need to, to and, and some good retail, Michael Kors is, is investing a lot of money in their windows and they are winning a lot of prices around the world because of that. And I think this is engaging. This is in your mind what gives you the, uh, you, you, you buy more than a product. Of course, that's true for, for luxury, but that's true also for other, also other product, Nike product. You, bu you buy also uh, because you want, to be, you want to be LeBron James. Um, so I think this part of dreams is, is, is important and you can have it when you go in store. So retailers need to go back to basics. I, I posted some in, in the network, in the social media, some, some good posts around that is to you need you need to you need to have a good store with the store team. So the basic when talking about basics is having the inventory, having a nice team with the appropriate hours to run the store, which is I think becoming there a challenge between finance and how much you need to get a, 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 a good customer experience. You need a minimum hours per week to drive the stores. I think there there is a room for improvement, but also get excitement around the new concept. So yeah, showroom, uh, everyone, everyone is going to work in that direction. So brick and mortar store becoming sometimes showrooms. Yeah, but we're talking about one or two percent of the whole stores. Um, and I think it's, it's hard also to, to become a showroom because I've been to in Paris in the Dyson, the Dyson store, you know, well, they, they, they have 10 SKUs to sell, uh, they sell, um, they sell products that are very interesting, very, uh, but very expensive too. Uh, but there is service when you come into the window is inspiring. And we're talking about something that is a product that you, you use to clean your house. So I think they are proving also that, um, even when it's, it's something you need to, as a basic uh in in your everyday life you need to put something on top of it to to sell your product so the store needs a bit of investment again i know we mentioned also with the neil sometimes um uh investment like crazy in e-com sphere in every brand because they want to have a nice uh a nice website where you deliver product still room for improvement in terms of a customer experience but we, we're going to talk about that in a in a in another one but if, if you look at, at, the, at the internet, the e-com has got a lot of investment. The solution inventory doesn't have so much investment. And I think they need to push that. But also the brick and mortar store cannot be the end of the story when it comes to budget, when it comes to investment. Because this is there if you have a great pool of stores that represent your brand, that gives you then the sales in the e-com. Uh, or digital world. Yeah, in fact, you know, I, 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 something I really like what you said, which actually uh, I, I believe in also, is that uh, the good old, old-fashioned retail has to stay. And the, the old-fashioned retail, when, what it means is that we want to still go to the store. Like you said, you know, people are lining up. And I've seen people line up in front of Zara and all these big, you know, uh, retailers, right? People line up and I'm like confused. What exactly are you trying to buy? Why can't you just order online? But right, you know, as a consumer, you really want to go experience the product. The e-com or the digital world is still very two-dimensional. But we human live in three dimensional world. So we want to, you know, go physically touch, feel it. Right. And that is what brings us to the store. Yeah. And the, within the store, we need to actually the way we have we've been doing the stores for last 30, 40 years. We need to take it further. We have to evolve yeah. it because now there are new ways of doing retail that we need to learn. And and there are definitely many modern retailers who have actually you know, given us some good examples of what is achievable. So I think, you know, uh, uh, yes, the brick and mortar has to stay, but at the same time, we have to learn, we have to learn about our customers, the modern customer, what is their, you know, expectation? What is it that they want? 
uh, their shopping behavior is changing, they are including the digital in, in it. So we need to bring those things. Like you said, the associates should have that two-dimensional piece, the product information, inventory information, uh, taking the order, those are like a silly two-dimensional thing. They should not consume your energy or your time. And let these associates spend more time with the customers, have a real human interaction. Let's talk about what we have here, what can be done with it, what you are doing, how, and let's form the community. So that is what you know. the stores actually, uh, I think, will do more and more as we go forward and as we evolve in our retail experiences. Yeah, I think I think it's a it's a main it's a massive challenge for for the retailers um, uh, because you need to um, it's not just one or two channels it's not just your own stores and the department stores and multi brand and uh, that's it now there is much many more uh, channels that you need to deal with and that taking bigger and bigger part of of, of the of the cake so uh, the I think I think the retail stores that are kind of a filter also too, uh, a filter of a digital and physical uh, customers coming in out. And, and, and at the end, we need to support and help these guys because, uh, because before you had your customer entering, you go to your selling ceremony, seamless service, perfect. But today you never know what's going to happen. I'm browsing in my store. You, you don't know if I, I'm waiting for a click and collect. I'm coming for a click and collect uh, order, or if I'm coming, I've just brought on the internet in in my. Uh, I I drunk my coffee and I'm coming into the store and here I am. So for the stores, the technology needs to reduce and efficiency needs to reduce uh, the the time consuming ta task in order to give a clear clear vision of inventory and also the systems so that they can absolutely uh, agree with you Anil is they can uh, focus on their customer and it's and and we've been also uh, teaching teaching is not the right word but in in training program when you look at the training programs inside the uh, in the big retailers um, they have evolved so much so when we talk about customer centric before we were talking about different steps of selling ceremony but today we're not doing this anymore is how you discover your customer, how you deal with the customer that is having the phone in, in on hand and how you deal with someone who is not there. He's there in the store, but doesn't want to talk or so. So sometimes I give you an example about uh, uh, good, but bad uh, um, initiative. Um, I think Sephora in that, in that time and maybe in the US, more in the US had a um, basket, red basket where it was written. Uh, if you don't want to be served, please take this basket. If you want to be served, please take the black basket. Absolutely uh, wrong because my as a consumer, I might change my mind in five minutes time and take the black one. But I I, I, I realize that I want to the red one. Um, so the consumer is leading the way every day, everywhere, in every channel. And that's where it's, a, it's quite new because retailers need to move with a known unknown area, uh, so every time we can reduce uh, um, uncertainty, such as we're talking about inventory, uh, um, buy online, uh, pick up in store, the more you can do that, the, le the more time you give to your people to focus on something that is very hard, is to, is to get to know my customer, is to surprise and delight my customer in different ways, small attitude that changed everything. So that's also a, a, a challenge today. I, I like that example from Sephora because I think you're right. I mean, I, I don't know that I want to be served until I want to be served. So I think it came from a good place of wanting to let the customer yeah. decide. Um, but I think the execution uh, maybe wasn't yeah. what they expected it to be. Um, I also like what you said earlier about yeah, people People are lining up outside of stores. And personally, I mean, uh, you know, I'm in the UK right now. I've been locked up. Uh, for, for months and I haven't shopped at, uh, online because I want to shop in store uh, because I want that experience, especially during this pandemic when people are kind of starved of that in-person experience. Um, yeah. But so with that comes, if you're waiting outside to buy something when you could have bought it online, it better be a good experience because otherwise you've just wasted yeah. your time for 20 minutes queuing. 
Um, so I think that experience is so important. And I know the people aspect of shopping is something that you really focus on uh, with your clients. And uh, the, the organizations that you've worked with have really done it right. You know, Ralph right. Lauren, Prada being examples of, of yeah. amazing customer experience. Um, so I'm curious, if we look at the people in store, uh, yeah. what kind of technologies do you think they need to be successful once, uh, once they actually have a customer in store that, that they're interacting with? Um, I will start with an example with um, uh, an initiative we run in Sephora in, in Europe, um, probably eight, nine years time now, uh, is having an iPad, not an iPad, an iPod, let's say, uh, iPhone between the iPhone and the iPad or smartphone, whatever. Um, and you could scan the loyalty card of the customer. So great, because you know what what are the, the habits of this customer uh, if there are some kind of a discount for, for, for this customer today. So different, you know, if you're a gold customer, black customer, so um, in, in terms of different range of, uh, of uh, um, uh, sorting the different customers. Great. Technology is great because you have everything you need, but even if you, you, you have everything that you need, it is something that the human person, the people have to get to use, to know, to, uh, to use on the sales floor uh, in a good way. The bad way is I've got the information and I'm reading, so I, I, there is a barrier between the customer and, and, and I, or um, customer doesn't like it because I, I you, you're just looking at what I bought and you want to refill, just the refill. And if I go to a cosmetic store, uh, which probably is not in the parameter, that we, we don't need to, to survive a cosmetic product. We go there because we like it. We feel better with the cosmetic uh, environment. Then, then it becomes uh, something that is not an advantage for the customer and for the brand. So we had to train our teams. We had to, because the purpose of that was to also, to get to know our customer better, um, leverage the average basket, the UPT, and of course the conversion rate. Uh, so it's to facilitate all the transaction. But again, we today we are not in a transactional world. We live in a, in a world where we want to fill the brand. We want to, we want something different as a sustainability, social media has, has, has brought in the retail industry so much uh, that you need to deal with. And sometimes you're not, you're not, you're not playing the game because you, you are outside of the pitch and you need to, you need to know, to get to know your players, to, to make them play in the right way. Customer today, the technology, you have the tool, you have the information, but you still need to train your people how to use it, how to, and, 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 and this is also recruitment process. And here I'm, I want to talk also to the talent acquisition people or the external recruiters. Um, we, we, can, we can teach a, a technical aspect from a product. We cannot teach an attitude. And when something's wrong in a store, mainly it's the attitude. Also because the customer has all the information on the internet before prior coming to the store. So um, attitude is key. How many times you see uh, teams chatting at the till? Uh, how many times you see also they are looking at their, iPhone, their, their smartphone? You never know. You, maybe it's the smartphone of the store to look at, oh, I'm gonna have a, a, a buy online pickup store, pick up, pick up in store uh, customer. But sometimes you realize it's their own smartphone. Disaster. So I think technology, I'm giving you examples that probably are not completely related to the solution, but it, it is what I see as a consumer. And what I see as a consumer is feeling again, touch and feeling the brand. So it's a disruption that is having a bad, very bad effect. So all that you need to make sure you have people who like to serve people who like to know who you are, what, what, uh, what do you do in life? And it's not transactional. It's just relation relationship before coming to a transaction, which is product for a price. So, um, and it's a huge challenge. Don't get me wrong. I mean, recruiting people who love to be in a store, standing up all the day long is, is a hard job today. Everywhere in the world, 
even in the US where it's the culture, the culture right. of customer service is probably higher than in the rest of the world. Still, you need to struggle to find the right person that's going to deliver and use that tool, that device, if we're talking about the technology appropriately. So sometimes the good one, the good salesperson will forget about the device because he feels that he doesn't need it. And sometimes he will use it because so it's just a perception It's just feeling also the consumer mood, how he behaves, how she behaves in the stores when entering into the store, how I'm going to approach that customer before using tools. Tools is, a, is, an, is an additional way to, to, to surprise and to make the customer satisfied. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think it needs to be a combination because if they're just right. on their phones and they pull something up and they see that you bought something and they just ask you if you want to buy the same thing over again, that really doesn't add anything to the customer experience. I think Sephora does generally do a good job of marrying technology with um, culture and true customer service and using the, the information they have because of the technology at their disposal to say, okay, well, I can see you're a member. You don't need to give me your phone number and your everything yeah. over again because I already have it. Um, I know which kind of shades uh, you yeah. like or the, the palette that you like so I can give you better recommendations. I know the general type of products that you go for so I can make an informed decision. So I think that's, that's a good example of marrying yeah. technology with customer service. But I agree with you that it has to be people first in store yeah. because all customers wanted to do was buy the same thing that they always buy again from Sephora. They probably wouldn't go with Sephora. It's very easy to shop online at Sephora. Um, yeah. So I'm curious if you have any kind of general advice for retailers as they kind of staff and create their in-store teams of yeah. the best way that they can set themselves up for success there. It starts with, as I told you, you know, I, I, I need people who, who love people. It's, it's as simple as it is. I mean, people who really, they like their job because they like to talk to, to people. Yeah. It might be very basic. Uh, but if you ask to a, a sales associate, the best, the best sales associate of a, of a big retailer such as Sephora, if you take the 10 best of the US and you ask them, what is your secret? Why you are so good at selling as a sales associate in at Sephora? probably they will they, they won't give you big secrets they will tell you that they they talk to customer they listen to customer they talk because they yeah. like to talk and 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 they don't they, they hate to go to training programs they hate because it's 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 something that you can't teach okay so um, because they talk and then they discover the need of a customer and they make you feel at home and they adapt themselves, the tone and the distance and the, the words they're using. So everything and, and luxury, for example, luxury customers, if, we talk, if we're talking about apparel, which is a very specific customer, they, these type of, of, of people, they, they go to an in store because they want to face a, 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 their sort of sales associate they know for, 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 for a long time. So they come to the store because they know they will have a conversation. So the secret, unfortunately, there's no secret. We need to find people who really like to be in a store and like to talk to people. The rest will come. Product, the brand, the rest is going to show up. Yeah, this is great. Really, you know, thank you very much for giving us a, such a really good, concise, you know, information about what is it that, you know, a best store associate, uh, what makes a best store associate. And in fact, you know, from a technology provider's point of view, there is an important lesson for me to learn. Or in fact, I'm a big fan of this uh, important thing is that we have to deliver best user experience. Mm so that very little energy is consumed when a user is using your application so that they can spare they can use all their energy in having conversation or interaction with the customer yeah. uh, generally you know generally in the technology space what we have seen is uh, people spend a lot of money and energy in building a very good user experience for the b2c for the customers yeah. But they don't take similar level of energy, effort, and money when building internal tools. 
And this is where, you know, uh, personally, I believe that most, a lot of investment has to go in the technology. And, and uh, it's something very dear, very close to my heart is that we have to build tools for the associates, for our internal people that are actually best in grade when it comes to user experience. They have to really understand what our people, our users want to achieve and they, what they want to achieve is serve the customer. So the tools, they should only come in the picture when needed. Number one, you, you yeah. don't want to just pick up a hammer because you are a carpenter, right? You, yeah. you pick up a hammer because you actually need to do something with it. So yeah. you, you use the right tool and you pick up the tool only when it's needed. Yeah. But when it's needed, the tool has to do the exactly what you want it to do and should not take too much of effort. I don't need help. I should not require help, additional help, so I can use that tool. Means that's a bad design. Yeah, and I, uh, an example of that is um, when we're talking about merchandising and planning teams, um, uh, because of the systems are so sometimes so old or not not responsive, you, uh, the 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 store teams have been asked to to fill in some you know Excel sheet to to um, to provide reports, which is crazy because we I'm 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 hiring people in stores to serve customers first and 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 best in class retailers are doing always the same job, which is how many times do we dedicate to sales uh, floor among all the tasks that we are asking? So, so they are tracking that for the best uh, of them. But still, even the best one are still asking this kind of report. Well, you can find if you have a, the solution that gives you the inventory exactly, then you can then concentrate yourself on the quality of the report and what come out from the report. And, uh, and, 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 and you use then the team, if you, you follow my example, you just then the time when you ask the team something, you ask for quality feedback to give you what you can't see in the report, which means missing sales, um, what kind of product colors or, but not just like, oh, one day someone asked me for the red one. No. I'm, I'm having figures with me and this is quality feedback that's going to help me to, dip, to, to run a different season with, a higher, uh, with higher revenues. So, yeah, totally. Solution, IT solution uh, integrated to the system of the brand are a must-have for the store teams because I've seen also so many teams having tasks like hell in terms of in inventory stock take or uh, giving some reports and and promise I promise it is not I'm not exaggerating this is the life of a retailer even for the best one we're always having that conversation okay how many times do we do we give to our teams to just sell what is the percentage of hours of the stores is just dedicated to to the sales floor and sometimes when you add so ops team, operations team in the, in, in the companies, in the head office are measuring that. Sometimes you're freaking out because you realize that 50% of the hours in the stores are not dedicated to customers. So, so agree with you. The more the technology gives you and get rid of uh, time consuming task and very efficient way, the best, the better. I love what you said there about um, that marriage between technology and people, because I think that's exactly what it needs to be. The technology is supposed to provide the quantitative part, the hard data, and then the people are supposed to, to provide yeah. the quality um, and that anecdotal feedback, which is so important. You really can't have one without the other. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what makes brick and mortar, you know, continue to be so successful, even though e-commerce is rising, brick and mortar still makes up uh, the biggest part of retail for a reason, because the, the quality there and the anecdotal feedback really does matter. Um, you know, I think we can leave it there for this episode, but I think our audience is, is gonna understand now why we're gonna be doing a series of episodes together, uh, since there's so much for us to talk to you about. Um, and, you know, it's been such a pleasure uh, having you on today. I think your, your clients are lucky to be able to get um, all of the, the experience that you've had working again with some of the best in class retailers out there. Uh, and we're looking forward to, to having you on again very soon to, to discuss a new topic. 
my, my pleasure anytime it's always a pleasure to talk to you and uh and exchange and balancing out ideas and, and examples that's great retail is a passion above all it's that's true, yeah. <laughs> awesome thanks thanks Lillian. thank you That's it for this episode of the Customer-Centric Retailing Podcast featuring our special guest, Sylvain Negra. Having worked as a retail director for some of the top brands in the world, including Sephora, Prada, Michael Kors, Ralph Lauren, Sylvain knows what he's talking about when it comes to creating the best possible customer experience in-store. And he knows that a technology investment is necessary. It's all about providing your in-store teams with the tools they need to be successful. If you like what you heard, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Please rate and review and recommend to a friend or fellow retail fanatic. This podcast is brought to you by Hot Wax Commerce.